We understand that the genome of each organism contains thousands of genes. Each gene or DNA sequence is transcribed into RNA and then, RNA is translated into proteins that play various roles in the body of an organism. Suppose, gene X is present in the genomic DNA of a mouse. Now, we want to know how much active is this gene, in different tissues of the mouse. Let's say, how much active is gene X in the cells of the liver, heart, and intestines of the mouse. By term active I mean, at a given time, how actively this gene is transcribed. In biological vocabulary, we want to study the level of gene expression in each case. Level of gene expression can be easily determined if we find out the amount of RNA transcribed from gene X in each tissue. For this, we need to do two things. First, isolate RNA from the different tissues of the mouse. And second, detect and quantify the specific RNA that is, RNA transcribed from gene X. The technique which will be suitable for this kind of gene expression analysis is, northern blotting. I have already explained the term blotting in the previous video lecture. We also know that, when we use the blotting technique for the detection of RNA then, it is known as northern blotting. The overall technique and, the steps involved in northern blotting is almost similar to what, we have studied in southern blotting. There are few differences that we will discuss today. Let's begin. The first step in northern blotting is, RNA gel electrophoresis. The RNA molecules isolated from cells are separated, according to size by gel electrophoresis. RNA molecules are negatively charged, so they move from negative to the positive electrode during gel electrophoresis. Now we know that, RNA is a single-stranded nucleic acid. But still, this RNA gel electrophoresis also includes the denaturation step. This is because RNA molecules fold onto themselves. And because of intramolecular base pairing, they form secondary structures. So, if we want to separate them on the basis of their molecular weights, we need them to bring in the linear shape. Otherwise, the secondary structures of RNA molecules will affect their electrophoretic mobility during gel electrophoresis. So, to denature RNA, formaldehyde is used as a denaturing agent. Thus, denaturing gel electrophoresis is used in this step. The second step is blotting. The separated RNA molecules are now transferred from the gel to the suitable solid support such as, the nylon membrane. The method of transfer is similar to, the traditional blotting method we discussed in the southern blotting. The third step involves, hybridization with probe and washing. Suppose, these bands are the RNA molecules on the nylon membrane. For the detection of these RNA molecules, first, we need a probe that will specifically bind to these target RNA molecules. The probe can be a complementary labeled RNA sequence or labeled complementary DNA sequence. When nylon membrane is incubated with these probe molecules, probes will bind specifically to their complementary target RNA molecules. Unbound probes are removed by washing. In the fourth and final step, detection is done. Again, detection and visualization method depends on the type of labeled molecule we used for hybridization step. So, these were the steps involved in the northern blotting. The main applications of northern blotting include gene expression studies such as to determine when and where a particular gene is expressed to identify the presence of closely related species, to determine the size and abundance of RNA, for the analysis of RNA processing. Modern methods such as PCR have replaced the methods of southern and northern blotting. This is because, PCR and PCR based techniques are more simple, quick and of more precise nature.
That's all in today's video lecture. Thank you for watching.